All right, let's jump into this first story. From the Wall Street Journal, Georgia Guidestones Monument Damaged in Bombing, <laughs> Mysterious Granite Structure, which has drawn tourists to rural town since 1980 was intentionally bombed, authorities say. Take a look at that photo, man. Dude. Wow. I'm really curious as to what they did, who did it, why they did it. The Georgia Guidestones, for those that aren't familiar, are, are called the Monument to Globalism. It's got these like 10 rules for, for creating a perfect society, like maintain the Earth's population at 500 million. Guide, what, is it, what does it say? Guide breeding or something? Guide reproduction Re wisely. Is this, yeah. I, I think this is Gra exactly. Guide reproduction. Actually, I think I have it. I'm so right curious on. who put these up. I am too. Check it out. Guide reproduction wisely. So they've got population control and eugenics right there in the first two. Number three is unite humanity with a living new language. What does that even mean? That, I thought that was currency. When, when I mentioned currency at the beginning, because you said they didn't mention currency uh, in these 10, yeah. you know, these 10 commandments or whatever the hell these are supposed to be. But they say a living new language. I don't understand what that means other than like a way of communicating that's not words. Tongue is this? Yeah, something like tongue, tongue clicking. clicking. Is <laughs> dancing. Finger snapping. Yes. Or something yeah. that More like that. changes and grows. Something that changes and grows. Maybe. But language does. Yeah, that's what it, does. it almost doesn't make sense. You know? I, so I have a question, right? So this is the, the kind of person who's going to be ragging on the Guidestones is not going to be, for the most part, a Democrat or leftist. They're probably going to shrug and not know what it is. Hmm. There are probably some anarcho-lefty types, tanky or communist types, who don't like it. No, actually, I take that back. The tankies probably love this stuff. But there's probably some anarcho-lefty types who don't like the idea of globalism for sure. Or at least the way they've described it. But typically, it's going to be more right-wing individuals who know what this is and don't like it. So whoever did this, maybe a false flag, maybe someone who's actually mad about globalism. My question is, the critics of this are predominantly going to be right-wing. Is this the first statue or monument that's been taken down that was predominantly criticized by the right? <laughs> I mean, we've seen Christopher Columbus. We've seen well, Washington, Lincoln. They just didn't Lincoln. complain and whine about it and protest. They just took it down. Well, I mean, the left just takes stuff down. Exactly. Like, they just show up randomly and throw ropes and then rip it down. Sure, but they make a big show of it. They don't do it in the dead of night. That's interesting. Or they have the access, though, to the power structure to take it down. I so think that's somebody's how they like listening. it. Yeah. yeah, somebody's listening at a university or somebody's listening downtown because they have the ear of the government. The right doesn't really have they that They want to make recourse. the authority comply with their orders. Yeah. You know what, you know what I thought about? What took so long? Honestly, in the mm. era that we're in. Oh, for real? Yeah, mm. in 08, this thing was vandalized. They wrote all over it. 2014, it was vandalized? 2014, again, I am ISIS, right? In 2014, something ridiculous. But now in this era uh, where anti-globalism is mainstream, you know, maybe back in the era of Obama, it wasn't as mainstream as it is now. So I almost 2000, thought, it was mainstream. Yeah. The left was protesting the World Trade Organization. Well, right, yep, in this way. Yeah, right. right, in this way, where it's almost a political force. You know, where uh, they had some kind of symbol that they needed to go after. It's almost like this one was at the top of that list. Um, and there haven't been, with all the anger out there, that I see even in polling, with all the anger out there, there hasn't been as many events as I thought there would be or you would expect there to be. And it feels like people are getting to a point where they're bubbling over. And they, there, there's just nowhere for them to go to air these grievances anymore. Hmm. So eventually, we're just going to see stuff like this. And oh. that said, we don't know who did it yet, but you know. I also think that Klaus Schwab is now in the news pretty predominantly. He, yeah. I didn't even know who he was two years ago. Yeah. World Economic Forum is all over the place. The Black Black Rock Black Stone buying up the houses is like trending on Twitter. Yeah. People are are becoming aware that there is a global corporation attempting to take control of the United States and, and every country on Earth. Because the, the nationalist governments are not capable of governing themselves. They need the corporation, according to Klaus. He's crazy. He's That's pretty good. Yeah, thanks. We have this tweet from the Georgia Bureau of Investigation showing this vehicle. Oh, yeah. The GBI is releasing surveillance video from this morning's explosion that destroyed the Georgia Guidestones. Strange. They just installed surveillance cameras. They, they recently did. So Shane Cashman of Tales from the Inverted World, he, he, wrote, he, he went down to Georgia. He did this big investigation. He went to the Guidestones. And he said they recently put in these, these floodlights and, and cameras. And then this happens. It's like, you, you, you mentioned this just a second ago. Why did it take so long, right? Yeah. And then why did it happen right after the cameras got installed? And where's why, the rest of it? Where's the rest of it? Yeah. They show the car yeah. and they're like, here's the car. But they don't show anything else. What? They just show 
an explosion. Fortunately, nobody was around. Nobody got hurt. But it's very strange. And then they show the rubble. It looks like they lined that stone with explosives. Like, they didn't just blow up the base of it. It, it looks like it got blown apart by, like, a, yeah. a bunch of explosions. It well, looks... Explosive. It it looks... I mean, I don't want to use the word pro. Hmm. But it doesn't... That's not... That doesn't look like amateur hour to me. I think it actually looks amateur. Does it? Really? Yeah, because it only took out one of the pillars. Only maybe because the blast didn't hit it. If you if if you look at it, it looked like it, it went. Well, down Mel, that could be a sign. It is amateur, but right. If it they, disproportionately if, came out one end. If they put it in the center, wouldn't it have taken out the center column? It yeah. looks like it was placed in front of one. Yeah. So it doesn't seem pro at all. Unless they it didn't expect it to take hazard. I've one never seen way a, and break and you know hit, yeah. hit one the middle column hit one side more than the other. Maybe they expected it to um, you know, come out almost symmetrical, but it didn't. Mm. I wonder why they decided to demolish the rest of it. Safety reasons. I mean, the, the, yeah. the, it could be teetering. It could collapse, you know, so. It looked pretty ragged after it Lawsuits. got the Somebody, <laughs> you, know, you know, they, right. They, they paid to maintain this. Like people would go out and clean up and all that stuff. The guide stones actually had a bunch of other features. Like if you looked through at a certain angle or something, it could show you where the celestial pole was. There was like math on it, multiple languages. There was um, explanations for weights and measurements. Why would they think this would survive nuclear war? I don't know. It's no. just stones. <laughs> right. Stonehenge. A bunch of, a bunch <laughs> of rocks. Is so long. You just got knocked idiots. over by a bomb. Uh, seriously. Uh, but I mean, think about it. The first two things are population control and eugenics. Yeah, they're idiots. Yeah. Well, of course. The, 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 yeah, the, let, let me read some of this for you. One of, let, me, let me show you two of the, of the ones, a couple of them that I really love. All right. Let's see. Um, rule passion, faith, tradition, and all things with tempered reason. Okay, I guess. That's not telling anyone anything, though. Mm -hmm. Because people Bossy. all have different ideas of what it means to be reasonable, but fine. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Unite humanity with a, with a living new language. That explains nothing to no one. No, who, who is going to see them go, oh, I get it. No, 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 no. But it gets better. So it says, nine, prize truth, beauty, love. Seeking harmony with the infinite. What? What, what a bunch of hippies. Yeah, Seriously. This, <laughs> this is written by people that have enough food to eat. Mm. Obviously. For sure. <laughs> yep. Yep. That's that's absolutely it. I like number seven. Be not a, avoid petty laws and useless yeah. officials. I agree with that one. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> they stole number eight from Thomas Jefferson. They yeah. just they just twisted. You know, they simplified what he said. Interesting. But that's what he used to this say. You have, no, I, you, you have know, no right that doesn't have an equal or greater social duty. As per Ian's point, I'm imagining like nuclear bombs fall. Everything's wiped out. <laughs> and then some dude with like a big beard and like a stick walks up and he starts looking at it. And he like feels it. And he goes, oh, my stars. Turns around and just starts butchering some random person to eat their corpse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really? <laughs> he's like, Is this I've what seen the means? truth. Uh. And then he just walks away and starts hacking kids down. Uh. Look at this. Let all. This is number six. Let all nations rule internally, resolving external disputes in a world court. I dig yep. it. That's like a, a, a global corporation yeah. to, uh, I don't know to rule that. everyone as a court. Who, like a UN. Like who appoints the court? Exactly. The countries. I, I actually no, did that one. Unfortunately. I, I, I like that one. Whose countries, you know? The United States gets to do what it wants. We're sovereign. We, you know, stay out. We mind our own that business. That goes without saying. But instead of war, we have lost. That's not how it works. We, it could try to do that, but this just sure. gives us some Idealistic. weird world try. court authority. We for, should try to have a court over shooting each other in the face. We have the I UN, so. but we still have like Ukraine. Right. Like I, I think yeah, war, so it's inevitable because even, you know, you have like, uh, uh, you have regular court, you have civil court. Someone will be like, that guy kicked my dog. I want to pay for it. And the other guy says, no, I didn't. And then the other guy shows up afterwards and punches him in the face. It's like, you have, we have courts. S the disputes are still not always resolved. Sometimes people still just get into a fight. So I'm, I'm, I think world courts are a good thing, hmm. you know, but you know, inside our country, we do our thing. Yeah. And then here's the issue. If the world court rules against you in a way that's extremely unjust, yeah, unless you're Israel, you get war. The World you Court reminds me of the yeah. Trans-Pacific Partnerships Investor State Dispute Settlement Clause, where they were like, a, a, a global arbiter will decide if, if the American people choose not to buy Malaysian oil, a world tribunal will decide if the American people can be sued and have to pay with tax money to pay this corporation back for here's, not buying their oil. Here's the real issue. That was a real proposal. The idea of some kind of global federalism where the countries are sovereign, but there is a very weak central power that can mediate, never going to happen. What will happen is the moment you enact a world court, it'll be just like the U.S.'s. The federal government will keep usurping power, and then eventually you're in a globalist authoritarian regime with their boot on your neck. 
yeah. then they're going to come to yeah, your country that, and be like, you lost the lawsuit. You can't use carbon anymore. Well, we that's, yeah, that's, it's going to come down and coalitions are going to come together to, to you know, basically take the balance of that court or try to influence it. Um, in the end, it would probably end up just like, I mean, I'm not saying it's not worth trying, but it might probably would just end up like the UN does. I mean, we have, it depends. I might be all right with this. If, if, if you know, we laid out the ground rules for how, who would be the arbiter? So I don't want some arbitration panel of elitists up there making up the rules. How would we select these I think, people? I think there's no real way to do it reasonably because yeah. people's Someone's values clash guy. dramatically. The U.S. values clash with China in ways that are just... Irreconcilable. Ex absolutely. So what's going to happen is, I'll, we'll use Elon Musk as an example. Elon is, is going to buy Twitter, right? He said, you know, I'm, I'm moderate. I think the good compromises that both sides are unhappy. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's how things are. The left wants the right banned completely. The right doesn't care the left speaks. So the compromise is, okay, we'll ban some of the right. Hmm. It's like, well, that's not fair. So uh, actually, we'll talk about this in a minute too. The uh, uh, Andrew Schultz, for instance, yeah. you know, he did this comedy bit. Netflix apparently wanted him to pull some jokes and he refused. Mm. And it's like, you listen to it and you're like, oh, he's, he's making fun of both sides. And it's like, yeah, kind of, but not really because the right is okay with the jokes. This is the, this is the problem. There's not going to be a fair court. You'll have the United States being like, we're totally cool that China does their thing so long as they don't come here. Then China's going to be like, we're not cool that they're doing their thing. And the world court's going to be like, okay, we'll compromise. The U.S. has to give up some of its rights. That's how it would play out unless you get aggressive. So I don't think, I don't, I think federalism, the idea sounds beautiful. I don't know how you protect against, you know, massive acceleration of uh, uh, the coalescing of power. Well, the United States Constitution is a decent archetype for it, but I don't know, man, to extrapolate that to the globe, it's like a fantasy of mine. Yeah, because you want to push your values on other people who just don't, or not even push them on other people. You wanted others to see the value of the ideas that are in the Constitution, but they, they just, some just won't. It would be pushing my values. Yeah. It would be forcefully be providing American nicer. democracy and republicanism Don't to the world, see? overthrowing monarchs, yeah. you know, upending totalitarian governments and giving the people freedom. Yeah. If they thought We've the world was going to here. end in, in a nuclear holocaust, so they made these stones and said, you got to keep 500 million people. That's the limit. And then no nuclear holocaust happened. Did they just decide you don't have to have 500 million people anymore? Or do they still hold that value and think, okay, well, now we got to do it? I don't think the 500 million should be set in stone. LOL. Uh, just like oh. how in the Constitution, one representative <laughs> represented 30,000 people. That number was destined to change. They just wrote it down there at, at the beginning because that made sense at that moment. At that moment. Tom. Um, this doesn't say like, and this number can change. They don't, they don't become. Uh, Seems arbitrary. It is arbitrary. 500 million. Yeah. Yeah, some, not, some, someone in the 80s. There's a lot of questions around who actually put it up. Why? Why are there questions around who put this up? It was put up in 1980, right? Yeah, by there's a bunch no of rich people. There's no way there's not still... That's just, oh, it's a bunch of rich people. Okay, that actually... Creepy makes people sense. who think they're smarter than you, and therein lies the big problem. Oh, there you go. There's a video going viral. Um, it's a bunch of climate change activists block a highway. Yeah. And then this guy gets out, and he's like, yo, I got to get to work. I'm on parole. They're going to lock me up if yes, I don't get to terrible. work. And they ignore him. And then he walks up to the person and he's like, give me one lane. Just let me get to work. Oh, I'm going to get locked up. And they just tell him no. Like, it's the craziest thing to watch. This guy tweeted. He's like, I'll testify in his behalf. I'm sorry that he got arrested, you know, but whatever. And then he's like, ask, ask the activists, organizers, what we should have done. And I'm like, you people are evil. That's what Messed evil up. looks like. That they think they're smarter than you. They think they're better than you. They think they're more righteous than you. And when you beg them, please, I don't want to go to prison. They just, they just look at you and say, I don't care. I literally don't care. It's fascinating, man. They think they're the righteous ones. The people who put up those stones are exactly that. Hmm. They think they know better than you, and they don't. They never do. That's why you can't allow this kind of authoritarianism. Because you get some guy who's like, I'm smarter than everyone. Everyone, melt down all your tools and make iron. Kill all the sparrows. Yeah. They're hurting the crops. And then you get famine and destruction and starvation. That's how it goes. You get these people who are like, I think the farmers should own the farms. Kill the landowners. And then everyone starves to death because the farmers don't actually know how to run and maintain the farm. That's what happens every time. Do not let these people who think they're smarter than you take over. Decentralization is the only way to properly maintain. Hmm.
Well, do we know if the people who set these up actually did any of the things that they were talking about? Or is all a lot of talk and a weird monument? No, we action. don't know who set it up. Yeah. They're still know. alive, probably. Yeah, I, I hope that so. they speak out. I'm looking at the Wikipedia. In 2008, the stones were defaced with polyurethane yeah. paint with slogans such as "Death to the New World Order." Yeah, <laughs> that's what it said in a way. Love yeah, that. and yeah. I am Isis or something in 2014. Right? Yeah, something. I am what Isis, goddess yeah. of love. Yeah. Oh, goddess oh, of I love. See. I was yeah, trying to remember okay, what yeah. the rest of that was. That's right, because I just saw it <laughs> a little bit ago. Um, after seeing this happen, uh, I looked at it and I I kind of remember some of these stories. But I, re- I don't I don't look at them as I look at a story like this now, or I didn't, because you know the struggle uh, that we're seeing in society right now, I guess, uh, is not as voc- it's vo- more vocalized now. It's more in party platforms now than it was before. Uh, so I guess that's why my initial thought was what it was, because we, we know people have had these frustrations in the past, but now they're coming to life and. It's not a small, you know, they would be kind of put off to the side. Ah, some nutcases vandalized it. You could read how the Washington Post tweeted this story, Will Summers, how he laid it out on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Even before he got into anything, the first thing out of his mouth was, you know, this has really been for a long time the target of these right-wing conspiracy nuts. That's how you choose to lead in this story. Which goes to show you, he's one of those people. Yep. <laughs> he's exact. That is him, and he gives his hand away by even coming out with it like that in the first place. Um, Thanks for checking out this segment from the Timcast IRL podcast. But if you want to check out the full show live, tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And if you want more special access content, head over to TimCast.com and become a member. Your membership helps sustain this company, keep our journalists employed, makes this show happen, and you will get access to exclusive members-only segments of the TimCast IRL podcast. And there's a massive library to check out. So again, go to TimCast.com or tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And we'll see you all there.